to all the grandmothers, mothers, great-grandmothers, happy Mother's Day. And I know this is a Mother's Day unlike any that you have ever experienced in your life. With all the restaurants being closed, with families not being able to take you any special place to celebrate Mother's Day with the social distancing that we're having because of this pandemic. Uh, hopefully this will be the only Mother's Day where those kind of restrictions are placed on our culture and on the world. There's a second grade class where the teacher spent a couple of days talking about the uh, the properties of magnetism and had magnets in her class and talked about what they would do and, and the attraction that metals had, different metals had to magnets and how magnets could actually pick things up and just all sorts of things about magnets. And by the end of the week, she had this little very easy quiz, obviously for second graders, but one of the questions was, I am a six letter word. I start with the letter M. I pick up things. She surprised when over 50% of her class wrote down mother as the answer to the question, who am I or what am I? Mother, not magnet. Mother. I pick up things. Somebody years ago wrote uh, um, an article on things that my mother taught me. And one of them was the importance of taking pride in your work. And the quotation was, if you two want to kill each other, go outside because I just finished cleaning the house. Or a lesson on logic. Because I said so. That's why. Or the, the circle of life. I brought you into this world and I can take you out if you don't mind me or one that I thought was the most intriguing of all, it dealt with being a contortionist. Just look at that dirt on the back of your neck. There's so many lessons that we learn from our mothers and grandmothers and great-grandmothers. And those lessons are priceless. I'd like for us to talk about several passages. I want to spend a little bit of time, maybe more time than the rest, in the book of Proverbs. But I want to start all the way back in the book of Exodus. Exodus chapter 20, verse 12. Honor your father and your mother, that your days may be long upon the land which the Lord your God is giving you. It's one of those basic commandments that you find in Exodus chapter 20. And it really is something that deals with... Uh, the, the principle of really what respect should be. So what is, it's not just the principle of honoring your parents, but actually what goes along with it. Showing that respect that needs to be given in recognition of the things that they've sacrificed to, to be able to have you where you are in life and to provide for you the way they would like to. But beyond that respect, it's an attentiveness to the lessons that they are trying to instill within you. And then ultimately the way that you try to imitate those good qualities that they have in their makeup and that you can have those good qualities in yours. And that kind of statement is something that kind of lends itself to, uh, to a lot of things. Um, and you find it echoed really in the, in the New Testament. When Paul is writing to the Christians in the city of Ephesus in the last chapter of Ephesians, he says this, Children, obey your parents and the Lord, for this is right. Honor your father and mother, which is the first commandment with, with promise, that it may be well with you and that you may live long on the earth. Obey, obey your parents and the Lord. Now, Colossians, when Paul writes Colossians in chapter 3 of Colossians and verse 20, he says, Children, obey your parents in all things, for this is well-pleasing to the Lord. Interesting statement. So why that principle and why this kind of concern? Well, what happens if that principle does not exist? There's an interesting statement that Paul writes to Timothy in 2 Timothy chapter 3. Starts out this way. 
Know this, that in the last days perilous times will come, for men will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, unloving, unforgiving, slanderers without self-control, brutal, despisers of good, traitors, headstrong, haughty, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God, having a form of godliness but denying its power, and from such people turn away. Now, when he writes to the Christians in Rome, there's kind of a similar list in, in Romans chapter 1, and the phrase disobedient to parents shows up yet again. So the principle that's involved in the, those Ten Commandments, the, the very basis of, of the rules and regulations that were incorporated within that nation of Israel, carry with it some tremendous responsibilities, and there's a reason for them being present. With that in mind, I want to go back and take a look at some statements that are made in Proverbs. We're going to start in chapter 1, work our way over to chapter 6, and then finally end up in chapter 23. But in Proverbs chapter 1, the statement is made down in verse 8. My son, hear the instruction of your father, and do not forsake the law of your mother, for there will be a graceful ornament on your head and chains about your neck. And the idea of change is not something that carries with the idea of slavery, but something that's decorative, something that has value, something um, maybe it's ornamental, but it goes beyond that. The value of it is something that's expressed here. So you have principles that need to be developed and understood and followed, but the value that parents can instill within their children, those valuable principles that need to be held onto tenaciously is something that's expressed really in these verses. So we go through, it's, it's, it's going to be noticeable that he talks about fathers and mothers. The fathers always come first. And I've heard people say, well, why is that the case? Well, one way perhaps to think about it is the mothers get the last word. I don't know whether that's correct or not. That may be a good way to time to take a look at this particular concept. Because here's the statement. Hear the instruction of your father. Do not forsake the law of your mother. There is value to be found in what doing that actually holds in your life. Go from chapter 1 of Proverbs over to chapter 6, beginning in verse 20 and going through verse 22. My son, keep your father's command and do not forsake the law of your mother. Bind them continually upon your heart tie them around your neck. When you roam, they will lead you. When you sleep, they will keep you. And when you awake, they will speak to you. What a beautiful poetic way to place the importance of that instruction. So in listening to the words of father and mother, the, there are principles that are innate within that, that family unit, principles that go all the way back to the statement you find in, in Exodus chapter 20. Statements that if they are forgotten or if those principles are not followed, deal with chaotic destruction and problematic situations as Paul addresses in Romans chapter 1 and in 2 Timothy the value of listening to the instruction of those parents, those godly parents, is something that's expressed in chapter 1. Here, direction. The direction that it provides when you, when you listen to that instruction. Bind them continually upon your heart, tie them around your neck. When you roam, they will lead you. When you sleep, they will keep you. When you awake, they will speak with you. Why is that the case? Because you've made those godly qualities a part of your life. And they do guide you as you go through the stages of life yourself. Now, by the time you get to chapter 23 of Proverbs, same kind of idea, but again, it's enhanced in a little bit of a different way. Beginning in verse 22. Listen to your father who begot you. Do not despise your mother when she is old. Buy the truth and do not sell it. Also wisdom and instruction and understanding. 
Verse 25, let your father and your mother be glad and let her who bore you rejoice. You start listening to this and the statements that are made deal with an individual that is more advanced in life. Listen to your father who begot you and do not despise your mother when she is old. It's a respect that still remains. Um, it's an appreciation for what the parents have done, even though you now are an adult. It's a recognition of hardships that they faced, of lessons that they have had to learn, mistakes that they've made, an acknowledgement of that that they've made, and endeavoring to instill within you something that's greater. So what do you take? What do you take from these verses? Listening to your father who begot you and not despising your mother when she is old and then buying the truth, not selling it, hanging on to wisdom and instruction and understanding, the very last part of that, let your father and your mother be glad, let her who bore you rejoice. Why? Because you now are passing those characteristics and qualities on to the next generation. There's a duty that comes with being a parent. Perhaps it was Mark Twain that made the comment that when he was a teenager, he thought his, he thought his father was just about as dumb as a box of rocks. And then when he was in his early 30s, Samuel, Clem Samuel Clemens, Mark Twain, said, it's amazing how smart my father became in that short amount of time. Perception of teenagers is often not really connected with reality where they don't see everything the way that they should. But with that maturity in the 20s and 30s, they see a lot more than they saw in those early years. That's why the instructions are given early in the book of Proverbs as well as these other verses that we read. For children to be obedient is not something that is to push them down and not allow them to reach their potential. Just the opposite. It's to lift them up where they need to be, where they can actually see that potential, that God-given potential, and utilize the opportunities, the talents, the abilities that Almighty God has bestowed upon them. Have a very blessed Mother's Day. Please stay safe. We'll talk again soon.